I'm going to show you how to create this plain wreckage scene in Blender, which I did in around 20 minutes. The catch is, none of these 3D models were created by me. So any beginner can follow along. So I came across this video on my YouTube feed, um, and it's a video by His Animations, and he's created 90,000 free assets that's, uh, that's used as part of the Source Engine games. I'm not too familiar with Source Engine, to be honest, but I'm going to be using um, these assets to create a post-apocalyptic scene in Blender and render it out with Eevee and Cycles. You can follow this video to see how you can set it up on your machine as they have like um, loads of assets and maps and things like that to create scenes from scratch. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click the link in his description and I come across this GitHub page. From here, I just go ahead and download um, one of these links over here. So depending on which game you want, you can um, you can see how much models you can get out of these ones. I think I just followed the, the YouTube video and I just downloaded this one. Um, and then you just simply go ahead and uh, click this one and click download and download everything as a zip file. Once you've um, downloaded the files, you can then um, extract it into a folder. And inside the folder, I kept the files like this. So I ended up deleting all these uh, files in blue over here. And I just kept resources.blend and the cats.txt file, Blender Assets. And also I deleted the debug folder as well. Once that is done, you can then go into Blender Go to Edit, Preferences, File Parts, and then here, just click on this plus icon under Asset Libraries. Then navigate to the folder where all your assets are, and just click Add Asset Library. Once that's done, you can close everything. And then maybe we can just drag out a window over here, and we'll change the window to Asset Browser. And then here, we can just click this drop down over here, and change it to Left 4 Dead 2 or whatever library that you downloaded. And here's where we can see all the models that we can use in our scene for free. Thanks to his animations for making all these models freely available. So let's now go ahead and create our scene. So I start out with a plane and I scale it up around 20 times. I then subdivide it around 30 times and then with proportional editing set to random, I then move the vertices up and I also added a subdivision surface modifier just to make it look smooth. So that we don't have an even surface. Then I started to add in these assets from the asset browser, um, like all these plain wreckage parts. And I just populated the scene with these assets. The great thing about this source engine collection is that it has a lot of these like debris and broken parts that we can use. Here I added a bridge. And then to duplicate it, I just pressed Alt D and then just made the bridge longer and longer pretty much. I also added a base for the bridge as well. And yeah, nothing really fancy. I just, um, again, duplicated by pressing Alt D and then just putting it into place to extend up the length. I then duplicated the ground and um, moved it behind. Continue to add some more assets. So I was just scrolling through the asset library, finding anything that looks interesting and added it. So I added this tower thing as well. And now it was time to add in these little bits of debris. So this library has a, an amazing collection of all this debris probably that you could find in the, in the game itself. There are two smashed up cars as well. Some more debris. A broken door as well. A 
a little plastic fence. And at this point, I wanted to turn all these little debris into a collection. So I selected all and then pressed Ctrl G to make it a collection and named it debris. Then I added a particle system on the ground of type hair. And I changed the instance collection to be the debris collection. I also changed the rotation as well so that it would face um, the ground up. And this would allow me to create all these random amounts of debris all over the ground. So it looks a lot more chaotic. Again, I'm just scrolling through trying to find any interesting asset that I can use. When I couldn't find any, I then started to look for materials for the ground itself. I didn't find the material that I liked, so I ended up going to Blender Kit, the add-on that I installed uh, into my blender, to see if I can find any cool material, and I found this nice coastal rock ground material. Um, and then I had to change the displacement and a few other settings uh, so that it fits the scene better. And I put the same material for the plane at the back as well. Now I'm adding a flower to the scene, uh, just to break up the scene and make it a little bit more interesting to show that there's a little bit of life in this plane wreckage. Like a symbol of hope, I guess. Then I'm just positioning the camera. I tried my best to fit the camera to the rule of thirds, but it's actually quite challenging to get um, that right angle that fits everything. Now onto the sky. I used Polyhaven to find this evening field HDRI image. Um, and then I went to the world settings and then changed it to environment texture and used that um, uh, EXR, the HDRI. Um, then I added a texture coordinate and a mapping node and just to change the Z um, rotation to get the lighting um, the way that I wanted. Um, I think the sky for me was a bit challenging. I didn't like the sky, so I experimented with a few different skies to get the lighting that I wanted. This probably took the longest time in, in terms of creating this whole scene, trying to find the right sky. What I was actually going for was an orange sky, and I couldn't find any free HDRI uh, image that had an orange sky. So I found this image on Pixabay of an orange sky. I downloaded it. And here I tried to look for the images as planes add-on in Blender 4.2 and it kind of surprised me because I couldn't find it. Maybe because it's in beta version or maybe because images planes is no longer supported. I wasn't too sure. So I pretty much gave up on trying to find where this, this add-on was and I just created a plane manually and added an emission shader to it and then I just put an, uh, an image texture of that Pixabay image that I downloaded onto it and just change the UV editing a bit to match up. So I then just scale it up and just put it behind the whole um, scene so that it would uh, fake the sky in this case. So I'm still driving the lighting from the HDRI, but um, the, the actual look of the sky, it's just a plane with an emission shader. Pretty quick and cheap. So here I'm just um, scaling up the uh, UV coordinates for the ground. Um, I think the texture looked a little bit funny. Then I switched the renderer to cycles and I just have a quick preview of what it looks like in cycles. And so far it looked a lot better than it does in Eevee. So I just went ahead now and changed some materials like the, the bridge um, so that it looks uh, more coherent. For the background sky plane, I uh, added a uh, transparent shader and I mixed it with the emission shader. I then added a light path and connected the shadow ray to the factor. The reason why I did this is because I want to tell Cycles to uh, not cast shadows from this background sky plane so that the sun rays from the HDRI can go through and we can still get the sunlight coming onto our plane wreckage scene. Time to add volumetrics. So I just added a cube. Uh, I removed the principled BSDF to the shader and I used the principled volume shader and connected that to the volume. Then I changed the density to 0.1. 
actually 2.01 because I think 0.1 was still quite dense for that scale. And then I scaled it up to cover the entire scene. So instant fog. Rather than having a plain fog, I wanted to make it a bit more interesting by adding a bit of noise texture to it and making the fog look a little bit more uh, interesting, a bit more dynamic, a bit more like, like clouds. Um, and yeah. I couldn't really tell if that made a difference to a scene, but yeah. Let's add some smoke to make the scene more interesting. So I found this free VDV site that has uh, smoke and we can add it into Blender. And, and luckily Blender supports VDB. You can just go to add volume, import from open VDB and um, just download that smoke plumes, that fire plumes file. It's 5.5 gigabytes, but I don't think I ended up waiting that long. I just uh, stopped the download about 10% wait because I just needed one of those frames. I didn't need all the frames and it's about 46 megabytes for one of them. So I just imported that into the scene and I gave it a render and it looked like this, which makes our scene look a little bit more epic. The great thing about using VDB is that we don't have to spend a lot of time setting up smoke simulations and all that stuff. If you find a nice looking VDB file, you can just import it straight into Blender and make your scene instantly look more epic without doing much work. So now it was finally time to get the final render. So once the render was done, I went to the compositor, I added a viewer node, I added a lens distortion node, and just to add a bit of chromatic aberration. I added a filtered glare with bloom, just to uh, make it glow a little bit. And we can make it glow more or less by just changing the threshold value. Uh, for the color balance, I just used that to create a bit of a film type of mood. And uh, yeah, it was just mostly just playing around with the color values until I found something that looked uh, nice, a bit more like a film. Then I increased the exposure. Finally, I added some film grain, some noise. So I go to, I believe, input, texture. Um, then I create a texture on the properties window of type noise and rename it to uh, film noise and then use that uh, to mix it with the existing render and just put multiply on it and you can just change the factor um, lower or high depending on how much noise you want in your render and yeah that's pretty much it that's pretty much how i created this final render uh, using nothing but free 3d models and assets and uh, a little bit of lighting tricks so we can get this cinematic result so here I'm just playing around with more uh, with different um, ways of getting the film grain. I think I tried to make it more smooth, the film grain, but I found that that didn't look as great by adding a blur to the, the noise. But I think just keeping it the way it is will look good as well. If you have an image of a film grain or, or a video of film grain, uh, of a film grain overlay, uh, that might be even better. But I just used the default one that's from Blender and that served the purpose for me fine. So that's pretty much how you create this scene from scratch. If you want to see more tutorials like this, please go ahead and like, share, subscribe and leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching.